All right, these are the Security Plus ports and protocols you need to know for your Security Plus exam. What we've done is we've taken all of the protocols, port numbers, and broken it down into a very easy to use uh, study sheet. You just need to know these protocols. You shouldn't have to study any additional protocols outside this sheet. So use this sheet to help you in your Security Plus studies. Use the link in the description to download a copy for yourself. Uh, it's a free download on cybercrafttraining.com. I'm gonna go through each of these ports and protocols and just talk to you about, in general, what each does. So first we have FTP. FTP is primarily used to transfer files. It has two ports associated with it. You have port 21, that's the control port. And then uh, that's used to just set up parameters about the transfer and port 20 is actually used to send the files itself. Along the same lines, you have secure shell at port 22. Secure Shell is a pretty secure protocol. You can apply encryption to the session. Also used to uh, transfer files. We also have SSH file transfer protocol. Even though it says file transfer protocol, it's different from FTP. This is based off of SSH. We also see secure copy or SCP also at port number 22. So keep that one in mind. Then we get port 49. Now, let me explain a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself of how this list works. First, we have the OSI model uh, layers listed out in this reference sheet. So a lot of these are gonna be application layer protocols. And this is where they're gonna be primarily found or the, the layer in the OSI model where the protocol or the port is primarily used, that's gonna be highlighted in a certain color. So the layer seven or the application layer ports and protocols are highlighted here in orange, okay? So all these, even though they uh, alternate between orange and white, all of these are layer seven protocols until we hit uh, the next layer of the OSI model. So all of these FTP, Secure Shell, SSH File Transfer Protocol, TACX Plus, those are all layer seven or application layer protocols. All right, so going into TACX Plus. TACX Plus is Cisco proprietary, is created by Cisco. It's used much like Radius uh, for AAA servers, authentication, authorization, and accounting servers. And we have DNS, domain name system, this is the basic, the series of phone books, if you will, that allow the internet to work. They resolve IP addresses with domain names. So you type in a domain name like cybercrafttrain.com and DNS allows you to navigate to the website to the proper IP address. You don't have to type in specific IP addresses to navigate through the internet. We have DHCP. This is used with network address translation, port 67, port 68. This allows for DHCP to, uh, to assign a dynamic IP address or private IP address for IPv4 based networks. HTTP port 80, you should definitely know this one. You should know all of these on the list and pretty much only these, but HTTP, this is for unencrypted internet traffic, mostly not used anymore. And if you have a question on the test that asks you to, or doesn't specify whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, which connection you should use, like a performance-based question, you should err towards HTTPS. Just because that's in modern, you know, in modern society, every website is using HTTPS, not HTTP. Kerberos here is a network authentication protocol uh, used to set up Kerberos, another sort of authentication method, similar like, um, similar to PKI or even a web of trust, but you know, Kerberos is its own thing. You'd have a Kerberos server that would at, provide a uh, ticket granting ticket. So we'll talk about Kerberos. It is another one of the videos if you want to search the channel, if you want to learn more about Kerberos. Post office protocol, port 110. This is for email or POP. Uh, POP provides one-way communication. So you can ping your email server using POP from your email client and receive messages or receive uh, emails, you're not going to be able to modify anything on the server though. It's not two-way. Unlike POP, we have IMAP. IMAP is two-way, so any changes you make in your email client will be reflected on the server. So POP's 110, IMAP is port 143. If you're using IMAP secure, it's port 993. Then we have SMMP, which is a network management protocol. It's used to monitor the status of network devices, switches, routers, things like that, over the network, uses ports 161 and 162. 
LDAP is over 389. This is a directory protocol used usually with databases, LDAP based databases. Then we have HTTPS. These are what most websites are. If you're watching YouTube right now, you are using HTTPS to, uh, to view this website. And again, if you wanna download this full uh, guide, just check the link in the description, go to cybercrafttraining.com, get a free download for your own use. We also have SSTP, Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol. This is a Microsoft proprietary protocol developed by Microsoft, used by Microsoft. It was designed to be a replacement for layer two tunneling protocol and point to point tunneling protocol. Uh, SSTP uses transport layer security, so it's very secure. Also over 443. We have I, uh, IPSec using ISACIMP. Okay, IPSec uh, used to provide additional level of security for internet connections, port 500, and it uses ISACIMP. You don't need to remember what ISACIMP stands for, but it's the Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol. So this is the Internet Protocol Security or IPSec using ISACIMP. Just remember IPSec generally associated with port 500. And again, network administrators can change these default ports. Like for example, SCP, since it shares a port number with SSH is often changed by network admins. You can change these defaults for a lot of ports. These are just the common ports as uh, commonly used and commonly by the naming authority assigned to these port numbers. These are common port numbers. Okay, we also have LDAP secure, similar to LDAP. 389 for LDAP. Uh, 636 for LDAP secure. The way I like to memorize this is you kind of have, you have, both of them have a three in them. And if you flip over the six, it's a nine. I don't know, it's just the kind of the way I think about it. Not really a good correlation, but LDAP secure is a secure version of LDAP uses transfer layer security. Then we have file transfer protocol secure. So you, you can see we have a lot of file transfer protocol type uh, protocols. This one uses TLS for, for security or for encryption. Now, just like FTP, you go back to FTP, FTP uses 20 and 21. 20 is control, or 21 is a control and 20 is the transfer port. Same thing for uh, file transfer protocol secure, 989 and 990. I believe 990 is usually control, 989 is where the files are normally sent. Now, file transfer protocol secure can also be done over 20 to 21 but a lot of times it's 989 or 990. Then we have IMAP secure. It's a secure version of IMAP. It usually uses TLS for encryption. This is for email clients. Remember, you have POP and IMAP. And we have POP3 secure, secure version of POP. So POP is 110, POP3 secure is 995. It uses TLS. Again, POP and POP3 secure, they're both one way. Radius, this is used for AAA networks or AAA services, 1812 and 1813. And that would be true also for diameter. Remember, diameter is an upgraded version of radius. So radius and diameter are 1812 or 1813. Then we have RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. This is Windows proprietary. This is how Windows tech support can remotely access your computer. A lot of times that's not really done it was more so and maybe a decade or two ago uh, that windows would offer that service <clears throat> not as common nowadays and a lot of scammers use this protocol to try and access your system but as an administrator you can use this to remotely configure your users endpoints uh, diameter 3868 just remember three eight it's sometimes it's also used on 1812 or 1813 but if it's not given a context 3868 for diameter Updated version of Radius user AAA servers. And then we have SRTP, Secure Real-Time Protocol. This is a replacement of RTP. This is used for streaming, okay? A lot of streaming, like even this stream right now that you're watching, or this video, might be using SRTP. Uh, a lot of times it's used for UDP connections. UDP is used for, uh, for streaming services and that would be secured over port 5004. Okay, now again, out of the layer seven protocols, we're going to layer four, the transport layer protocols. We have TCP. TCP is a protocol suite, okay? You have 
multiple protocols that work within that suite. Okay, so it's just on here as a reference. Same with UDP. UDP is connectionless. You know, TCP, you have a handshake process. You have a SYN packet sent first, synchronization packet, then a SYNAC packet sent back, synchronization acknowledgement, and then finally an acknowledgement packet sent back from the first connection. In UDP, imagine a garden hose, you're, you're spraying that garden hose, you're spraying the, where you're sending the signal, or like a radio uh, transmitter, you're sending the signal, and if the packets get there, great. If they don't, it's not your problem. <laughs> you're not worried about a handshake process. Okay, we point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. This is an older protocol, sometimes used for VPNs. No longer used as a deprecated protocol, so if you see this, just assume it's not secure. Then we have RDP 3389. Again, this is listed sometimes with layer four, sometimes with layer seven. This is Windows proprietary, again, remote DEFSCOP connections. We have at the data link layer, layer two tunneling protocol, uh, L2TP. This is an older protocol. We don't use this anymore. This has been updated, uh, so don't use L2TP. Uh, this is usually associated with port 1701. It needs to be in layer two data link layer. And we also have point to point tunneling protocol. So we have 1701 for layer two tunneling protocol and then port to port tunneling protocol 1723. It's based on uh, PPP and it's deprecated. It used to be used for VPNs. We don't use that anymore. Okay. Again, what we use, uh, we use the updated version of that, which is secure socket tunneling protocol. SSTP, which uses TLS and it's transmitted over 443. So I hope this is helpful. These should be all the ports and protocols you'll need for your Security Plus exam. You want to make sure you're studying just, just what you need. There's lots of ports and protocols out there. Uh, you don't need to waste your time studying everything. Just focus on the ones on this reference sheet. That's why we made it for you guys. So you have an easier time passing your Security Plus exam. And if you want a copy, please check the link in the description. Download it for yourself. And we also have live classes, self-paced classes for Security Plus. If you're looking to get certified, check out the links in the description. We're, we're here to get you certified, and that's what we do. All right, hey, thanks so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Hope you have a great day. Take care.